What is up everyone? It's Ryan. I live in Cambodia, but I just got back from a trip to Thailand. Don't know people like this. Can you hear that? Don't know people like this. It's the sound of Cambodians booing across the nation. Cambodia and Thailand have this feud going on where they fight over who did what first. I don't really get it. I get it in my comments all the time. Come on guys, there are better ways to take out your sexual frustrations. For example, I like to take bamboo skewers and jam them up underneath my fingernails. Just jam them in there, just, hold, just give it a little pop. <laughs> I'm not thinking about sex at all anymore. Stop all the fighting. Won't somebody think of the children? Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. All I am saying is give peace a chance. No, not gonna happen. All right, then might as well take advantage of all that hate, dump a little bit into the making of this video. What's that? Thailand is filled with bitch boys? Oh, jeez, I don't know, that's not very nice. People are not gonna like that. They'll probably express their anger in the comments below, thus telling YouTube that this video is worth watching, worth showing to people. <laughs> of course, I'm on Team Cambodia for life. And so this video is about some of the things I don't like about Thailand, some of the things I prefer about Cambodia, and some of the reasons why you might want to retire in Cambodia instead of Thailand. And to be fair, Thailand beats Cambodia in a lot of categories. It's a bigger country, there's more people, it's more developed, it didn't go through a genocide in the past 50 years. So there's a lot of categories where Thailand beats Cambodia, but we're not gonna talk about those. I told you, I am Cambodia for life. Transportation is a big one for me. Because Cambodia is smaller and has less people, the traffic isn't as bad. If you compare the capitals, Bangkok versus Phnom Penh, you can see how small Phnom Penh is compared to Bangkok. In Phnom Penh, I can basically get anywhere I wanna go in 20 minutes. Bangkok, you can barely go anywhere in 20 minutes. I've taken buses, trains, and taxis in Bangkok. <laughs> and none of them compare to one of my favorite things in Cambodia, the tuk-tuk. Tuk-tuks are small, they can weave in and out of traffic, they're kind of fun to ride in, they're cheaper than cars, and maybe most importantly, there are a ton of them. On our recent trip to Thailand, we took a few taxis in Pattaya, and most of the time we had to wait over five minutes for the car to arrive. One time it took about 25 minutes, that's just for the arrival, then we had to drive for another 22 minutes, that's a total of 47 minutes just to go three kilometers. Time is money, people, and in Cambodia... I'm rich, bitch! Speaking of money, the cost of living in both countries is very good. If I look at my monthly expenditures, my biggest expense is eating out or ordering in food. You say ordering out food or do you say ordering in food? I ordered in food. I ordered out food? Let's order in some food. Let's order out some food. I spend like $150 to $200 a month on takeout and eating at restaurants. I could certainly eat for less than that, especially if I stuck to Cambodian food, but I don't want to eat Cambodian food for every meal. A typical week for me will have me eating Chinese food, Japanese food, Korean food. We had Indonesian food last night, Indian, Greek, Turkish, American food, Thai food, and of course Cambodian food. I believe that in order to do this in Thailand, it will cost you more money. Food might be cheaper overall there, but I find that Western food or any foreign restaurants are actually more expensive in Thailand than they are in Cambodia. And we can actually put this to the test. <laughs> There's an American barbecue place around the corner from me called Carolina Barbecue. I have a quick look at their menu. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I just want to get a pulled pork sandwich for lunch, so that's why we're doing this. Pulled pork sandwich with fries and a Coke, $5.42. Boom, order's been made. Let's see if we can find the equivalent in Bangkok. Apparently, Billy's Smokehouse is the way to go. Come on down to Billy's Smokehouse. My name's Billy. Do you like smoke? I got it in my house. Yeehaw! Get off my porch. If we compare the two, $8.10 versus $5.42, and you get a drink with this one. That's just an example based on my future lunch, which is set to arrive in 20 minutes. I'm not sure why Western food is more expensive in Thailand. Maybe it's because it costs more for a foreigner to open a restaurant in Thailand, or maybe rent for a business is just more in Bangkok, or maybe Thai food is just so delicious that there's less demand for other types of food. I'm not sure, but I think this is something that people often overlook when comparing cost of living in Thailand and Cambodia. Drivers arrived at the store, lunch coming soon. Yee 
Actually, one more thing with this. Here you can see the delivery time for the pea pork in the beacock. This is further argument for my last point about transportation. 45 minutes to get this Sammy in Bangkok versus about 25 minutes to get it in Phnom Penh. Another thing that's way cheaper in Cambodia is alcohol. While we were in Thailand, we had a couple beers, just a few, not too many, not like a whole lot. Like we spent a week there. We just drank maybe a few beers, not like a big pile of them. Like we weren't getting like smashed and sloshed and stuff. Bottles are heavy, so we went with cans and we went with the tall boys because they're cheaper overall. So that's 490 milliliters. The cost was 50 baht per can, which is about $1.35 US. In Cambodia, beer from a convenience store is usually about 65 cents. So that's a regular can, 330 milliliters. And if we do some beer math, that means you get 3.6 milliliters of beer for one penny, one cent in Thailand. In Cambodia, we're looking at five milliliters of beer for every cent. That's almost 40% difference. So beer is 40% more expensive in Thailand than Cambodia. See kids, math is important. Wine and spirits are also much cheaper in Cambodia, as are cigarettes. I mean, is this actually a good thing? You can argue that it's not, but it's part of a bigger picture. I think Cambodia has less rules than Thailand. There's more freedom here. Actually, if we rewind the footage and we go back to when I was buying alcohol in Thailand, you can see this sign. In Thailand, you can only buy alcohol between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. and between 5 p.m. and midnight. So that's 14 hours out of 24 that you can't buy booze. Let me set a little scene for you guys. It's Saturday morning in Thailand. You're headed to the supermarket to stock up for the week. Eggs, rice, bread, pregnancy test, and some beer, just in case that test comes back positive. Oh, wait. It's 10 a.m. You can't buy beer. You're going to have to make a second trip. And with all that traffic, you'll probably end up missing your baby's first steps. All because Thailand didn't think you were responsible enough to control your booze intake. In Cambodia, you can buy alcohol at any time of the day, day or night. You can order it online. You can't do that in Thailand anymore. Here's a story. One time Sarah and I were in Bangkok. And after a long day of sightseeing, we decided we would head back to the hotel sit by the pool. Oh, let's grab some beers at the convenience store. Sit, have a nice cold beer by the pool. This sounds great. Oh, we're so happy. We're so excited. Oh, wait, it's four o'clock. You can't buy booze at that time. No alcohol sales between two and five, bitch. So we couldn't get any beer. We left the 7-Eleven disappointed. As soon as I walk out the door, I see a prostitute standing on the corner, leaning up against a lamppost, big giant fake boobs, and one of her nipples is popped out of this bikini top she's wearing. It wasn't even a nice nipple. It looked like a dog's chew toy. I can't buy beer, but this is going on in the streets. I just remember thinking, Bangkok, you're a f***ing disaster, my guy. Another thing I don't really like about Thailand is the mall culture. There are so many malls, wall-to-wall -wall malls, mall-to-wall mall, mall-to-mall -wall mall -mall walls, wall-to-mall manals, big giant malls that sell nothing I want at all, just encouraging people to buy shit they don't need. In downtown Bangkok, you can't swing a pad thai noodle without hitting a mall. Malls and convenience stores, that kind of sums up Thailand for me. We've talked so much about beer. Let's talk about my other favorite drink, Mr. Franz Kafka. I'm talking about coffee. <sighs> Nothing more refreshing than a hot coffee in a 42 degree Phnom Penh weather. I think the coffee scene in Cambodia is better than the coffee scene in Thailand. Yeah, I said it. In Cambodia, I can't swing a Koi Tiep noodle without hitting a place to buy coffee. In Thailand, of course there are coffee shops. There are really good coffee shops, but all the little coffee stands that you get in Cambodia are replaced with convenience stores that sell mediocre cups of Java, no frills, nothing fancy, no heart in it. 7-Eleven coffee, it's fine. I can't say it's bad coffee, but it's not as good as the coffee they're making in little stands where the guy's only job is to make coffee. All right, so far, some of these things might seem a little frivolous to you. Maybe you want the numbers, the boring stuff. The stuff that makes you want to grab another one of those bamboo skewers, just jam it, maybe right in your ear. If you're considering a retirement in one of these countries, you're going to need a visa. A retirement visa in Thailand requires, let's go to the notes because I'm not memorizing all this, for you to be 50 or over, an application fee of $60 for a single entry or $150 if you want to be able to leave the country and come back. You need to have 800,000 Thai baht in a Thai bank account. That's around 22,000 USD 
or you have to prove that you have a monthly income of 65,000 baht, which is around 1700 USD. You also need to have health insurance, that will cost you maybe another $500 a year minimum. There are some lesser costs, things like criminal background check, medical certificates, translations that need to be done, notary fees. There's a re-entry permit that you'll need if you want to leave Thailand. You'll also have to report to the immigration office every 90 days. It's almost like you're their uh, bitch boy. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of costs. Cambodia, on the other hand, in order to get a retirement visa, you need to be 55 or older. And basically you arrive to Cambodia on a tourist visa, which is good for 30 days. And then while you're in the country, you hire an agency to get you the retirement visa. They just need your passport, a couple of photos, and you have to be registered with the FPCS but your landlord or even your hotel manager does that for you. So you bring all that stuff in and a pile of cash and you get a visa service person to do it. I heard it costs 250 US, other people have said 300. Probably depends on how much the visa service company is taking. And that's pretty much it. They do all the work. You come back in 10 days and pick up your passport and you'll have your retirement visa that you can renew every single year for as long as you want. No reporting to the government every 90 days. You can leave the country and come back whenever you want. No waiting in lines and getting documents translated or notarized. You don't even need a Cambodian bank account or insurance. It's all pretty simple. Furthermore, we're gonna give Thailand a couple kicks while they're down. This year, a new law was passed in Thailand in regards to foreigners paying taxes on any money they bring into the country. If you stay in Thailand for 180 days or more out of the year, then you're eligible for this. If you make money while living in Thailand, even if you make that money from a company outside of the country, anything you're bringing back into the country and putting in a Thai bank account, you're going to have to pay taxes on. I'm hearing it's 15%. Now, pensions are exempt if the pensions are government pensions. Private pensions will be taxed. There's a whole lot of exemptions. There's all kinds of double taxation rules and stuff. I'm not going to go through it all because I, I don't want to have to read all that garbage. Boring, boring garbage. If you're interested, you can go to the thailandlife.com slash expat dash tax dat dash Thailand. And there's a whole article there. It covers off pretty much everything. I mean... One of the reasons I left Canada was because I didn't want to have to put up with all this bureaucratic BS. I definitely don't want to have to get a tax identification number, wait in line, do all this, you know what I'm saying? In Cambodia, it's just so simple. You show up, you pay somebody $250, you're good for the year. You don't have to worry about anything. You can go grab a cold beer, even if it's 4 p.m. You know what? This reminds me, I have to do my taxes. My Canadian taxes. What's the date? Is the date? Oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah. Mm -hmm. I better get going. I have to go do my taxes now. So I hope this video sits well with you. Lots of love from sunny Cambodia. Take care. Comb your hair. I'm out. I'm out to go do my goddamn taxes. Yeah, the C R A baby. Don't match up. No love. Fucking hate. I just fade when I hit the jack. You can get the pie every night. I can't stop. Yeah, when I check the cops.